Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture week 10 of quantitative trading strategies. So in the first video, we're going to talk about statistical arbitrage and pairs trading. So statistical arbitrage talks about statistical methods that are used to identify uh, a relationship. So this relationship is needs to have the statistical significance, uh, which means needs it needs to pass certain statistical hypothesis tests. And the relationship is among multiple financial assets. We are going to find the underlying long-term relationship. And based on that, we are going to generate trading signals. So um, a unique thing about arbitrage or statistical arbitrage is that it is a market neutral strategy. So this strategy is used to generate profits by taking advantage of the temporary market inefficiencies. So for example, if there's a temporary mispricing in assets, then we can take advantage of this opportunity and make a short-term profits. So this uh, means that no matter uh, how the market moves, whether it's going up or going down, we're going to, uh, this is not how we're going to make profits. We make profits based on the uh, temporary uh, uh, deviation from the long-term relationship. So it involves two steps. Um, identify the pairs of trading instruments based on the specific statistical procedures that identify the co-movement in the, in the context of pairs trading, which we're going to talk about later, and then generate the trading actions using the strategies such as the pairs trading. So let's uh, look at one example. In this example, we have two stocks, right? So this is stock price and horizontal axis denotes the time, the time point. So we have uh, a, a total of four time points. In the first three time points, uh, their movements are exactly the same, right? So we observe the so-called perfect correlation between stock A and B in periods uh, zero, one, two. However, at the time period three, things start to uh, deviate, right? So we observe that uh, stock A increased by 10% in period three, while stock B increased only by 5%. So this is our observation. Uh, this means that we could take advantage of this arbitrage opportunity by going in a long position for stock B because uh, if stock A increased by 10%, then stock B is also expected to increase by 10%. But now it's been uh, undervalued. So in the long run, it will go back to its fair value. It's, it has higher pot uh, potential to go up in price. Then that's why um, we take the upcharge opportunity to go long in stock B. Or alternatively, uh, asset A or stock A may be overpriced, then we can go short in the uh, stock A at this period, All right? So let's look at one case study, which is uh, long-term cap, long capital management. So this is a classical case study that uh, use, uses statistics arbitrage to make huge profits, but then it, it ignores the systematic risk, which means the market suddenly moves uh, in one direction and which is uh, cause a huge loss because of this small probability incident. So this is a hedge fund with millions of uh, asset management and over 50% yearly return, right? So it's backed by invest, investment experts and academics, including two Nobel Prize winners. So the overall um, strategy is that they use model to analyze a dynamic forecast. And uh, the uh, typical strategy is called convergence street which is based on uh, and the exact same idea. So they take advantage of the short-term fluctuations in price and then wait long enough to, uh, for the price to converge. So, in, so instead of focusing on one asset, they uh, typically look at uh, two correlated or co-integrated assets and then take advantage in case of market temporary uh, fluctuations. So this is a market neutral strategy, right? And they use rigorous statistical tests to the point that it is uh, over 95 or 99% uh, 
uh, statistically significant to be able to uh, to uh, go uh, to open to a position for the for the correlated or co integrated assets, right? So they use uh, cheap leverage to amplify the profits up to thirty or even fifty five times. So that's where the uh, risk lies as well. Um, then uh, they diversify the portfolio to capture risk by engaging in multiple uncorrelated strategies. So this uncorrelated. Uh, it's only proven by historical data, but then when the market moves together in one direction, which has never happened before, then uh, it's also the reason why they crashed because the seemingly uh, un uh, small correlation or even a lack of correlation, uh, it's not something indicated by the past data. So if a, if a single strategy has high volatility, then the portfolio will have low volatility. Due to diversification, that's based on the historical data. Again, uh, because of small probability incidents, that's the market suddenly moves in one direction. For all the uh, similar uncorrelated assets, then this gives a, a systematic risk. So this assumption crashed when the market crashed. Right. All right. So let's talk something about the Pulse Three in terms of the uh, process flow. So initially we have a, a universe of assets, uh, stocks A, and A, B, and C, etc. And then we're going to select a pair of stocks that passes the so-called integration test, a co-integration test. So we're, we're going to talk about it later. Um, so suppose we select stock A and B, then we will obtain a normal range of historical spread for the pairs, uh, for the pair, the current pair of co-integrated assets. So now we're our focus shifted from the original surprises to their relative spread. And we construct a series, a time series uh, of the historical spreads, right? So one day, one time points. So spreads can be for now considered as the price difference, right? The relative price difference. And then based on the spreads, we compare this current spread with the historical spread to assess if the former exists a normal range. Right, so current spread is uh, also indicator of the uh, market market fluctuations. So if it is very different from the historical spread, spread, that gives us the uh, window to open position either long or short based on the temporary um, market inefficiencies. So, for example, if the short term fluctuation occurs due to market fluctuations by the underperforming assets while well, short selling the overperforming assets, right? Because they will eventually converge to their fair price. So this gives us a trading signal to enter a position. And when the current spread reverts back to its normal range, then we will exit the position and lock in the profit. So this serves as a, a stop loss order. Right, which we have a threshold. Once it passes the threshold, we will close the position, lock the profits, or stop the loss. So this is where we uh, have the trading signal to exit the position. All right, so that's it for this video, and uh, thanks for watching.